Today, I'm happy to introduce our presenter, Tania Rivera, for the last uh, coffee lecture of this semester. She is medical information specialist at the team research support service of the medical library. Thank you for giving this presentation, Tania. Good afternoon, everyone, to our uh, discussion on ChatGPT and literature research. The aim for today's session is to briefly reflect on what we've learned so far since the inception of ChatGPT. Also discuss in ways our team of information specialists can support you if you are incorporating ChatGPT in your literature search workflow. I will illustrate uh, some ChatGPT inquiries, the 3.5 version, provide some tips, and then also show some examples of how we can support you based on that scenario. And then of course, a couple of thoughts. So what have we learned so far? Quite a bit. During this time, we have seen so much information, applications of this tool. Um, we were able to ascertain right, some of the possibilities, such as helping with diagnostic or decision-making. Also with writing, we've also have seen quite a bit of limitations and drawbacks. It's safe to say that we will not be crediting ChatGPT as a co-author, but of course, if you are using the tool, you definitely want to cite it. But where are we with respect to literature research? When we talk about literature research, it's important to preface that if you are using this tool, that there is a team that can support you. And here are just a couple of ways that we can do that. If you're using ChatGPT, for example, to explore uh, topics, topics that it suggested from your prompting, this is something that we can help and explore with you to see if there's any literature out there based on what was generated. Some of you may have used ChatGPT to design an initial search. And this is something where we can also partner with you to review your initial search and guide you on how to optimize, translate, as well as document accordingly. And if you're using it for other tasks, we can also provide guidance and resources to support your research endeavors. So with ChatGPT and exploring topics, this is something that definitely it's a strength. Here's just an example. I asked ChatGPT, I'm exploring a topic and I need help refining it. And I put in right my topic, what you can see on the right-hand side, patient experiences with diabetes care, how can I focus this topic? And right away we can see various options that I can then decide, perhaps I can narrow my scope on one of these aspects. And so this is definitely a strength for ChatGPT. And sometimes when you're interacting with the tool, it will also provide formulated questions and in that particular example, it actually provided me with three. So it provided one regarding elderly individuals experiencing diabetes care in rural communities. Also a question about the perceptions of pediatric patients regarding technology assisted uh, diabetes management. And then also one that, regarding healthcare providers and patient communication and how that might impact diabetes. Uh, care or behaviors. So if you are in the situation where you're finding some potentially good topics, but you're not, e not exactly sure, is there any literature out there? This is where our team could meet with you and do a brief scoping search. And this is something that I personally explored. So I looked at each of these research questions I incorporated some of the terms and I was able to find articles on this topic. So for example, for the elderly individuals experiencing diabetes care in rural communities, there was an article regarding patient perceptions in rural areas. 
regarding diabetes care and one regarding pediatric patients. There was a really interesting paper that came up regarding the psychosocial aspects of diabetes technology use, right? Getting the perspective of both the family and the child. And regarding provider patient communication, I was able to find um, a really interesting article. And so this is something that we could help. If you're not exactly sure the scope or perhaps you're questioning, you know, because again, with ChatGPT and AI technologies, there are things that are happening behind the scenes that you're not aware of, but this is something that we can help determine for you. And regarding formulating research questions, if you already have a question, but you are struggling with breaking it down into concepts, uh, ChatGPT does this pretty well. I would have to say regarding the traditional PICO framework, this is patient intervention compared or outcome. There's also um, other iterations, right? The PEO, that's population exposure outcome. There's also PCC, this is for qualitative research. This stands for population concept and context. And also SPIDER, which is a framework if you're doing um, mixed methods um, or qualitative. And this is something that you can use it and this performs pretty well. It doesn't do all the frameworks, but many of the uh, frameworks that are used for breaking down into, into concepts, it does pretty well. And for those that are considering doing a search strategy in ChatGPT, if you are going to do this, um, there is an approach you would want to take if you are building a search. Do consider a step-by-step -step approach, right? Building blocks when you are interacting with the tool. The feedback and the prompting should be very specific and very detailed and maybe at times, maybe a little redundant. And of course, right, giving that feedback, it will start to learn and then hopefully provide the, the output that you're looking for. And in this respect, if you are going to start with ChatGPT in doing an initial search, in your workflow, do consult with an information specialist. That way we can peer review it and validate your search strategy. So here's an example that I've done. So first I tell ChatGPT, I have a research question. Can you help me first break it down into concepts? So I'm gonna show you from Pico into then a search strategy. So automatically it then provides me with all of the main elements. So I have a clear idea of how potentially my question will be broken down. On the right-hand side, you. I provide my question, right? Can cranberries prevent UTIs in older adults? And here you can see it does a really nice job of breaking down into the concepts, right? And then from there, I need to identify synonyms, keywords. And how I approach it with ChatGPT, I ask specifically, can you provide synonyms for the P and the I concepts? And here it will list all the different concepts. I will take a moment to review this and then see how I want to move forward. And I notice, for example, in my synonyms list for my intervention, right, we have variants for Cranberry, but perhaps I do want to include all of those. So I prompt ChatGPT again and say, ChatGPT, can you just include Cranberry and Cranberries and remove everything else? and it was able to do that pretty well. And so now that I've identified, right, my Pico, I have now my synonyms, now I need to consider developing the query. So here you can see, I now I'm asking very specifically, putting it into a type of syntax. So I asked ChatGPT, please put in PubMed syntax, with the title and abstract with square brackets. So I'm being very detailed. And then I say specifically, uh, I want cranberry and cranberries to be searched in the title and abstract, create the string. You can see here that it creates the string with that syntax that I need for each of the synonyms. Once I do that, I then ask about mesh, right? Because if you're 
doing uh, PubMed search via ChatGPT, you want to incorporate MASH. So I ask for MASH, and then of course it does let me know, right? Because of its training set, right? The last knowledge it has is from January, 2022, but it does offer a MASH term and I tell ChatGPT, okay, I want to incorporate it, add it to the search string. And so now I have built my first concept, right? Step-by-step step with the title and abstract and then with the mash, as you can see on the right-hand side. And then I would apply this for my other concept. And then at the end, tell JetGPT to bring it together. So here is my entire search strategy that I was developing with ChatGPT. And then of course I wanna do a quick test. And so I then apply it to the PubMed interface to at least see if anything gets produced. Now, does that mean this is a optimal search strategy? No, and this is where we can come in. So you can develop a search query via ChatGPT and then consult with us, we can take a look, peer review it, validate it. And then from there, through the peer review process, we can then help you on how to optimize and then develop an even more robust and accurate search query. Here is a scenario, for example, if you're a researcher and you wanna do a protocol uh, or some kind of plan, but you didn't have time to look at the materials, you can ask ChatGPT to create a protocol. So I asked ChatGPT, I would like to create a systematic review according to Prisma P, right? Because you heard it somewhere and you want to incorporate that in your protocol. And it does list all of the main elements. And then with that prompting, you can flesh out your protocol even further. Here I asked ChatGPT, can you provide more input on these sections? And then it go ahead and it offers me more information. And where we can be a part of this process is then you can bring in your proposal, your protocol, and here we can provide further guidance. So for example, in the second um, section, number two, regarding registration, we can tell you information about Prospero, how to register, what are some additional information you'll need to be aware of regarding element six and seven, right? The search strategy and steady selection we can provide you guidance with what sources you would need to incorporate. Also for screening tools, what um, screening tools according to your needs would be helpful for you. And this is something that many of us have encountered when we're asking for references. And this is one of the things that we learned quite quickly is that ChatGPT produces really interesting and seemingly real results, but we're not quite sure. And something that you can try when you're interacting with the tool is to request for unique identifiers for sources. And so depending on the source, right? But a couple of examples for books, that's ISBN, journals, ISSN, uh, DUI, um, et cetera, et cetera. Again, depending on the output. So here I asked ChatGPT, are there any references for conducting a narrative review? So it lists, different books and they look real, they look legit. However, I don't know if they are. And this is something that can be very time consuming when you're verifying information. So I asked ChatGPT, do any of these references have a unique identifier like a ISBN or ISSN? Now, because of the description, I know that there are books. And so it then provided me the ISBN for those sources. And so what I can do as a first step for books, you can use the library's catalog to see one, if they're real, and if so, if they're in the collection. So on number three, doing a literature review in health and social care, with the ISBN, I was able to go into the catalog put in that unique identifier, and I was able to then see that there was um, this book available. And then of course, if you are prompting ChatGPT to provide unique identifiers and you're not able to obtain that, a couple of suggestions, depending on your field, 
PubMed, for example, has a citation matcher that you can use as well as Scopus is also a really good tool when you're trying to find citations. So that could be also an approach to take. So just some final thoughts. When you are using ChatGPT, do reflect on what you're doing, what your aims are. The team of information specialists are here to provide further support and resources. It is important to us that you are able to create really good queries, find the right information, definitely have very specific detailed prompting as well as feedback, that is key. Also supplement with other approaches and tools. And again, we are here to help. If you have any topics you want to explore, protocols you need to develop, or you need support on where to incorporate, right? which databases you should include, what tools you should use for screening or data extraction. And we have a list of tools that we're building. We just recently updated, so feel free to check out what we have. We'll be incorporating more, and we would also love to hear your questions and feedback. So thank you so much for your time and attention. <laughs>